On Larry King Now, I'm joined by two Hollywood legends, Kevin Costner and Gary Oldman. These movies, when they work at their very best, and often they don't work, but when movies are working at their very best, they can become about moments and things that are said that you will never, ever forget. Ever regret anything you turned down? They were interested in me many years ago for Edward Scissorhands. Really? And I read the script and I went. You made again. some great baseball. Yeah, I've, I've enjoyed making that. I got one more in me. What are you going to do? I, I can tell you there. Plus, I know this much. I, 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 don't, I don't recognize America anymore. Right? It's, not, it's, not, it's not the America I remember. I understand what Gary is saying. There's a there's a high level of immaturity in, in how we what we talk about and how we talk to each other. All next on Larry King Now. King now special guest today Kevin Costner and Gary Oldman Hollywood legends Kevin is an Academy Award winning actor director producer and musician known for his work in films like The Untouchables Dances with Wolves Robin Hood Prince of Thieves Bull Durham and a lot of other great ones too just that just a few and Gary Oldman's decades long career has garnered him an Academy Award nomination two BAFTA awards he's known for roles in films like Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy Sid and Nancy, JFK, and the Dark Knight Trilogy. And we were in a movie together called The Contender. And now Kevin and Gary are starring alongside each other in Criminal, due out in theaters April 15th. I saw it yesterday. This is a, this is a wild movie. Okay, when you get the script that tells you you're gonna play a convict whose brain thoughts from another person are put into your head. Yeah. What's the first thing you think? I said no at first. I said no a couple <laughs> times to this movie. I, 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 I did. I did because they, the, the producers and directors, they saw draft day. And so whatever, whatever they thought draft day, I could play this criminal. I wasn't sure if they had lost their mind or what. It had nothing to do with draft Yeah. I, I mean, it, it didn't look like that character. And so... Well, but, but I, I did like the situations, and I knew Gary was, was going to be in it, and I, I, so I, I, did, I, I took it. And uh, it was probably the only movie I've ever done where on the plane to London, because we don't do rehearsal anymore. I do on my movies. I get a week to two weeks. No rehearsal on this stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. I, it was the only movie I ever did on the plane ride. I didn't know how it was going to play the part. I didn't know what my voice was going to be. I didn't know anything. I got to the trailer. I think you must have had the same thing. I, I got to the trailer. I had long hair. I had a whole thing on. And they said, well, this is the rape scene right here. I go, they go, you got to cut your long hair. You got to. And so that meant I had to figure out my look that day. I saw you that day. Yeah. I mean, I, I, my, my connection or involvement with it was, um, it, it, you know, first, it's a wild idea. Crazy. Right? So you go. But it's fun to But watch. it's fun. But you kind of go a brain transplant <laughs> movie. And you think how that's going to work. But I met Ariel. I liked him. The director. So, yeah. I liked him so much because he had a great energy. Of it and it's it, to me a, a, an overview. You know, he had a real take on how he wanted to make the movie. And it was also an opportunity. We were in JFK together. So it was, um, and then Tommy came on. Tommy Lee Jones came also on board, JFK. and it was a sort of, uh, it was nice that that yeah, to sort it was. of re re reconnect. And, and the, the and, idea of who these guys are also made that idea of not then, being able to rehearse amazing. When you guys would walk into the room, you had three <laughs> leading guys who could hold their ground. Why don't they rehearse anymore? They don't anymore. They don't think they can afford it. They don't know that. It cheapens the movie. I mean, it actually makes a movie less expensive because people know what they're doing and there's less talk. Now, because of the you way we care. work, we need to talk about stuff. And there's a lot of people go like this, going, oh, they're talking about their parts again. Oh, this little voodoo about, you know, acting like, like it's to indulge us a little time to talk about it when we haven't rehearsed it. It's like a luxury that's gone away. How it's did the you news. view it's your character? Thing. You head yeah. the CIA office in London. Yeah. You have a distinctly American accent. Yeah. Well, you've lived here a long time. Lived here for But yet you 20, talk British now. I, I, yeah, yeah, I've lived but here for... But then you talk 20, American. 22 years. Um, 
I make, well, my kids are American. And I know I make some sounds that are, now, <laughs> uh, that are now American and that when I went back to British, believe it or not, when I did Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy, I had a voice coach. <laughs> because I don't hear the sounds that I make that are more American than the, it's a, I've just got a very, but I haven't lost my accent, but I would never think of saying, um, you know, it's all, it's, I would never think of using the word lift to describe an elevator. You know, it's, right. uh, yeah. Yeah. This, this is a sweater to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not a jumper. Yeah, you know, exactly. Yeah, you know, so, um, yeah. <laughs> so I'm, but I'm in the, I'm, I'm, I'm you... in the culture. And the cast is wonderful. The girl from Israel. She's terrific. I love that. The girl from Israel. Hey, I'm Jewish. <laughs> the girl from Israel. The girl from Israel. No, she's terrific. No. Yeah, she is. Yeah. So sweet. And you got uh, Tommy Lee and you, the, the villains are good. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's, and it's nice to see, you know, I mean, heaven knows I've, I've played my share of the, the bad guys. <laughs> and uh, and uh, it was nice to see Kevin. It was, you know, have you I mean, ever not, played a corruptible person? Oh, yeah, I played a serial killer. I played, you know, 3,000 Miles of Graceland, Perfect World, you know. But one of the, one of the things that, that, that we did, because we knew we weren't afforded the time to do the things that we wanted to do, and we stealed the time. And in, in a really complicated scene out on the airport, you know, Gary and I, we broke off and we went back to our dressing room and we were like guys in beginning acting class. I said, look, at, we've got to, we're going to yeah. go out there and, and we need to experiment a little bit right now. So we're literally in our dressing room going, we're like grabbing every minute we can so that we, when we go out on that tarmac, that we can make the best choices that we could possibly make. And, you know, what I appreciated was I said, Gary, would, would you come over? And he said, yes, you know, and there was that kind of thing of like, that's what you call support when you say, look, at, I, I, I just really need to, to run this. I need to even know where I'm going to be at. I need to hear you because I don't think anybody out there really cares anymore. They feel like sometimes we're a little bit of hot water or cold water that we can somehow just turn it on magically. And there we were in a dressing room doing the, the, the scene the best. And by the time we went out there, it, it was it was really smart that we were in there. We did and it several no one, times. No one else. There, there were quite a few days that we did that yeah. in the lunch hour. Well, well, I, well I say lunch hour. I mean, you know, the, the 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The 10 minutes That's that English thing, you know, that, yes, that, that tea that, hour or something. Yeah. Um, two smart guys who were terrific. Next, we'll look back at Kevin and Gary's incredible careers. The film is criminal. It opens April 15th, and it's criminal if you don't see it. It really is fun. We'll be right back. We're back with Kevin Costner and Gary Oldman. The film is criminal. It opens Friday night, April 15th, opens wide. It's going to be a big hit, in my opinion. It's, it really is a terrific, terrific thriller. Selection of parts. How do you choose what you will do? Do you look at your part first? Do you look at the whole thing? What do you want to know when you get a script? Look, I think the, the, it's, it really is, um, from, well, really from the ve very beginning when I started, it is the level of the writing and then who's in charge. I think that to me is who is, who's the director um, and, 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 and script. What if you don't know the director? Well, then you meet the director as I did with, with Ariel. I mean, I'd seen his previous film, which impressed me, but I sat with him and I liked him very much. He had a great take on the film. And I thought, you, you, you know, it's seven weeks of my life. Can I, you know, 14 hour days, do I want to be in the company of this person for 14 hours a day? Do you read the yeah. whole script? Uh, yeah. How do you choose? It just depends on if you're going through a divorce or not. You just, <laughs> no, I, I, um, there, yeah. You need the money. <laughs> Listen, man. If, no. man you, 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 you don't want any. It's life circumstances. <laughs> it's life circumstances sure. because if it's on the other side of the world and you kind of go, do I really want to be away from my family that you long? Then you don't go. That. You know, it's all, you, you know. It, it, it truly is. For, for me, you know, there's got to be a, a couple scenes in there that I think 
um, that I feel like I'm the only person that can say this, that can do this scene, that I, or I really want to say those words because I, I just want to own them. I want to own the scene with Gary, with him in that thing. And I knew, and, and for us in the hospital when we woke up, you know, I knew that, it, and it, that, that, you know, sometimes people say, if we can only get the scene to turn out 80% of what we thought it could be, it'd be great. We didn't, we hit that thing perfectly. Yeah. And, and um, you know, he's great. He just, it, and he's like, it's just, I, I look at it, and so it's nuanced. So, so it has to be words that I that I but want to look get, back. But when you read the whole script, I do. I because I, I you have to know that other actors are going to be attracted to it. I don't I don't want to. You can't you can't you don't want to be the head flea on a dead dog. You want to have a, a you want to have a kind of script where you know that world class actors are going to also you know throw their hat in the ring if number one it fits their schedule and and and, and is that. Ever regret anything you turned down, Gary? I've turned a few things down. I can't say I regret, but uh, I couldn't mention them. Because it, other people got the part. Yeah. But, but when it, you but saw it, it, did you say, oh, gee? I can tell you one story that they were interested in me many years ago for Edward Scissorhands. Really? And I read the script and I went, <laughs> it's ridiculous. There's a castle at the end of this road, and then an Avon lady comes around selling makeup, and this kid's got scissors hands. This is this is nuts. I don't get this at all. And ended up not doing it, or not even. I don't think I even went in for a meeting. I just said it's not. I I I don't get it. Then of course they cost Johnny Depp, and Tim Burton was relatively unknown at that time too. It was sort of so that was another unknown sort of commodity. And I go and see the movie, and the camera pans over these multicolored houses in this very sort of suburban neighborhood, and then you see the sort of Dracula castle on the hill. Literally two minutes in, I went, yeah, I get it. <laughs> I got it. I just got it too late. <laughs> but uh, you ever regret anything? Well, uh, you know, two seconds ago, I knew exactly what I was going to say to you, so I don't know if there's Alzheimer's coming on mm -hmm. or what. Um, but you know, there, you all always pass on uh, on a movie um, that, that someone has to take, and and I I passed on I think Platoon. Uh, just my brother was in Vietnam, and there was a series of movies that were always about guys gone crazy, people fragging and doing that thing. And when he came home, it was like I'm not crazy. I went back to school. I got my degree, and that kind of thing. And I thought I can't be in that particular. I can't be in that particular movie, you know. Uh, I don't. I, it just, and and that turned out to be a really great, a, a really great movie. Have you both done stage? I've done one stage. I wasn't very good on it. No. No, I was. I was horrible. I knew it. And there's nothing worse than going to the theater and knowing you're bad, and I was bad. But it only increased my desire to do better. But it was a hard to go to the theater. Are you good on stage? Do you like stage? I did many years of it, and. Um, it, it, it's it's hard. it's a night's work, that's for sure. Well, I but, would imagine uh, an actor would like it because the audience is right there. You start at the beginning, you go. Yeah, to there's the something end. very. That's different. what I like about music, and Gary's a musician too. Yeah. You know, that's what I, I love playing. You have a for, band, right? Yeah, we play for fifty or thirty, forty thousand before. So it, I love to play the music that feels live. Uh, but there's this energy that comes with a band. So what's the name of your band? Modern West. Country. Pardon me? Is Not it? really. It's a rock and roll. I think it was one of the worst points in my life when, as an adult, go, now we have to name ourselves? Because we were just get, getting together <laughs> to play. You yeah. know, and then you had this like, big list of what you would call yourself. And I was just going, this is not going to work. We've got to give, our, <laughs> give ourselves a name. So, so that's the name. Let's good, mu talking. good music, too. Yeah, you, thank you. Yeah. Let's, you know, so the name was what. When we come back, a game of If You Only Knew, featuring Kevin and Gary's funniest fan encounters. And don't forget, Criminal opens April 15th. We'll be right back. We're back with Kevin Costner and Gary Oldman. They star in Criminal, a terrific movie. I keep saying it's a terrific movie because it is a terrific movie. Hey, what do you guys think, before we get into, if you only knew, of the current state of politics in America? Are we going to go there, please? You don't want to go there. OK, you don't have you, to. You know, um, I, just, I don't, I know that, I know this much. I, 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 don't, I don't recognize America anymore. 
I, it's not. It's not. Well, it's not the America I remember. The, uh, Disappointingly first, so. Yeah, when I first came here. Yeah. You get into politics. Yeah, well, I'm, yeah, I, I understand what Gary is saying. There's a there's a high level of immaturity, in in how we what we talk about and how we talk to each other, and you know, listen, being president. It, you know, it, the idea is that you're going to face a new situation, a crummy situation every day. So that's that's spontaneous leadership. But what you're really wanting somebody to come into office is with some big ideas, because regardless of this crap that's going to happen every day, oh, something's happening here, something's happening here. America, it, we, we, we kind of lack the big idea. But I but I think this uh, I think there's an immaturity and there's a vulgarness into how how we talk and uh, it's a it's it feels like a low point and I know there's a lot of really quality people but right now it feels like a low point for I us. I mean I don't know who would want to do it you know I Why mean do you every, want to every, be every morning you're woken up where they say we got some really bad news for you today and then the next morning they wake you up and they say do you want some bad news? <laughs> I wouldn't even have dinner with people that talk the way these people talk to each other in what is called a debate. It's not a debate. There's some kind of just loud yeah. discussion. Do you support anybody? Uh, I've, I've thought about some people that aren't running anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Do you support anybody? I like, I, like, I like Kevin. I like some people that aren't running anymore. Here's the thing. I am a polit I'm a junkie. I watch this stuff and follow this stuff. But boy, oh boy, you say one thing, and anything now just oh, yeah, completely blows up in your face, and it's Social just media. oh heavens. Yeah. So I st I steer very I steer yeah. very clear of it. You know. I think it's smart, Gary. Okay, we play a little game of if you only knew. I just throw questions. Right. Best advice you ever got, Kevin. Best. Uh, <laughs> oh, best advice. Uh, my dad told me to uh, put the correct title on whatever it was I was doing, and I probably wouldn't get into as much trouble. <laughs> meaning, meaning, I, t I told this story before. I took a piece of candy, I stole it, and he said, "He said, what are you doing with that candy?" And I said, "I was hungry." He goes, "He goes, no, that's not what you did. You stole the candy. You put the correct title on what it is you do, then you very rarely have a problem in life." You that's, that's fantastic. I love that. Funniest fan encounter. Funniest fan encounter. Um, there, I had a little pokey little room in an office, not too far from where we're sitting, and um, a, and and people started to kind of know they, they worked out where I was. Mm -hmm. So fans would occasionally hang outside and want pictures or knock on the door. And one day I got a knock on the door, and a woman was going to have a tattoo of me. Uh, on her left breast, so that it was a sort of the template for this picture was there, and of course she wanted to tattoo my signature underneath. What did you say? The picture. I said, um, uh, "Do you have a pen?" <laughs> <laughs> what was yours? Well, I tell you must have had many. Yeah, I've, I've had many, but mine was a little, I'm going to tell you a little different one. In the first Gulf War, you know, sometimes the Hollywood community comes to um, a song, to rally. David Foster called me, who you know, and, and called me, and the whole uh, uh, community came forward. He gave me a lot more credit for being the first guy in that that helped start this thing. But anyway, we're over at the Warner Brothers thing and, and, and everybody you can imagine, Springsteen and Quincy Jones, you go right down the list, everybody's singing this song. It's been a long day. And there was even uh, veterans' wives there and we, we ended up meeting everybody, but it was a six hour day. It was long. I'm now walking down the hall, the, the big studios, you know how steep they are. And I was tired and I heard this voice, Kevin, Mr. Costner, and I was about 40 yards away, and I, ha I had a good chance that I could keep walking that I didn't hear that. And I have tried to be good to fans my whole career, but I was beat, and I thought, there's enough distance I could get away with, didn't hear it. Then I, I was, now I'm 50 yards, and I heard the voice again, Mr. Costner, and I took about six more steps, and I thought, there's no way, and it was, and I thought, you are such a turd, S stop. And I stopped, and I turned around, and I looked, back at this woman and she had kind of like deflated because she thought I was going. But she looked at me 
And I walked back to her and I said, yes, what's happened? And she said, she goes, I want to thank you for coming today. And she says, um, I want to tell you how much your, your movie Dances with Wolves to me meant to me. There, she goes, there's a scene at the end where you come back from being a prisoner and, and you run, you see your, your wife and you're running up the hill and she's running up the hill and you hug her and you kiss her. And it seems like that kiss goes forever and you roll in the snow. And she says, my husband's missing in action. And all I can think of is that moment that, that maybe I get to run and meet him again someday. Whoa. And I want to make my kiss with him last as long as you made that kiss in the snow. And so I walk back to something that I didn't know what I was walking into. And it, and it affected me. And I've had that happen a lot of times. You, you, you have a lot of meaningless encounters. And sometimes you have some that hits you right to the core. And when she said, I've lost my husband, and all I want is that moment, I went back because I had the negative, And I cut out three frames of that negative and sent it to that woman of that exact scene. Uh, so not such a funny encounter, but oh. it's probably similar to That's some it. of them that we have. Some of them can be meaningless, and that paper that you sign is lost two seconds later. And sometimes somebody can... Uh, affect you, and that one affected me. I had a moment with Danny Kay. I had him on my radio Danny show late at night, Kay, yeah. and a lady called in and said, my uh, my son loved you, Danny. He just loved you. He used to imitate you. And he was killed in Korea. He was in the Navy. Yeah. And they sent home the stuff from his footlocker, and the only picture was a picture of you. So I framed that picture, and it's next to a picture of my son, and I dust your face every day. Mm. And Danny started to cry. Yeah. Well, it can happen you to you. You never know how you touch people. These movies, these movies, when they work at their very best, and often they don't work, but when movies are working at their very best, they can become about moments and things that are said that you will never, ever forget. In our final moments, Kevin and Gary will take your questions. Don't click away. We're back with uh, Kevin Costner and Gary Oldman, two good friends, and they get along well. And they star in Criminal. It opens April 15th. You still a baseball nut? I still play. I've never been a fanatic. I'm a fan. You know, I love I love to play. You made the game. some great baseball. Movies. Yeah, I've I've enjoyed making those. Field know? of Dreams, classic, yeah. best yeah. baseball movie. Bull Durham. Yeah, love of the game. I I have enjoyed that. I got one more in me. What are you going to do? I, I can tell you later. The right golf. Now. You're not going to tell I me. Like, I like the golf movie. There you go. Oh, the 10 cup. cup. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I think I have one more in me. It has to do with the Cubs. Well, so you are going to do it. I don't know. I got to get it written. You a baseball fan? I watch it, but. Um, You're a I, cricket guy. Oh, no. No. <laughs> oh, cricket is, no. as Albert Brooks says, cricket is baseball on Valium. <laughs> it's. Uh, Larry Brown on Facebook, how do you handle <laughs> negative reviews? They, they, they really bug me. <laughs> they really, they really, I can, you know, they always say water, you know, it's just water off your back. It's not me. I take it really personal. I mean, I mean, if it was constructive criticism, that's what you usually build on. But when it's cute and hurtful, you know, yeah. I, it affects me. So, yeah. Too many times they're trying to be cute. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's turned into, you know, listen, the cuter you can be and the meaner you can be, you can actually have a television show now. So it's <laughs> so being cute and mean is is turned into commerce. And yeah, the minute yeah. that happens, how do you handle it? It, it, it um, how do I handle? Well, it uh, it depends if they're not for me. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> no, you uh, yeah, you can um, yeah, you it's they, they can be they they can be upsetting, but it's you listen you. It's the sea you swim in. You're putting yourself out there. I'm going to ask one more. Uh, Dances with Wolves won Seb Bobby Nelson on Facebook. It holds a place in the National Film Registry. Why did that film have such an impact, is his question. I don't know. I, you know, it was a, 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 it was a journey movie, and I think everybody wants to go on a journey. It was... Um, it was your it, baby, though. It was, yeah, it was a... It, it was a you didn't know where the movie was going. I think people like that in movies. I think it was a bit of fresh air and it took us back to a time in the country that we still don't really completely acknowledge and understand when, when there's this clash of cultures. 
and uh, out of it came, you know, um, some really violent images, but uh, it had an equal amount of poetry in it. So um, it was something I wanted to do. Uh, nobody wanted me to do it. It was called Kevin's Gate, which I, <laughs> and I, and I, I, I just couldn't quite understand it. Took every bit of money I had and took all the time I had and uh, off. It, had a, it, it had a really good outcome, but um, you know, Everybody, it, it's nice to go on a journey, and, and a movie can take you sometimes. And Tinker Taylor Soldier Spy, great script. Yeah, great piece of writing, great, great source material. And yeah. I had, and obviously, it, you know, uh, David Cornwall, who, John Le Carre, who was a spy, um, who wrote who wrote the book, is still alive and still around. So it was always good when you're, when you've not only. Uh, because people sometimes say, how do you get into it or how do you prepare? You know, it was really the book became my Bible because it's all there in the book. But also I had access to the to the man. And uh, so they and they don't come along no. often. How often do you see great scripts? I've, I've, had, I've been a part of some. And, you, yeah, and you the thing have. is, but the thing is, the great ones, they usually start great on the first page. They do. I have a bad habit of reading the bad ones all the way through. I keep hoping they're going to get better. <laughs> but, but the good ones, they're almost good from page one. Thank you, guys. Okay, Larry. Thank you, Larry. Thank good you. to see you. Big thanks to my guests, Kevin Costner and Gary Oldman. Be sure to see them in Criminal. It's due out in theaters April 15th. It's a great film. You can always find me on Twitter at King's Things. I'll see you next time.